You guys remember the Nintendo 64, right? Well, what about Doom 64? Creepy. Well, anyway, what if I told you that now there's Brutal Doom 64? Let's check it out. That's right, from Sergeant Mark IV, the creator of Brutal Doom, comes Brutal Doom 64, a mod that modernizes Doom 64 to an extent while also keeping it classic in a way. I think it's important to understand some of the history of Doom 64 to really understand what Brutal Doom 64 can bring to the table. Now, even back in the day, Doom 64 was a bit of an outcast. In the mid-90s, Doom was being ported everywhere. We're talking the PlayStation, the Sega Saturn, the 32X, even the Super Nintendo ran the freaking thing. And by the time it came to the N64 in 1997, the original PC release was almost four years old. And shooters didn't really look like Doom anymore. They looked more like Shadows of the Empire or Turok with full 3D worlds and characters. You could look around, jump and climb, plus sprite-based enemies were looking to be a thing of the past. As a result, Doom 64 got mediocre reviews when it released in 1997. Not only did recent console shooters impress more, but contemporary PC shooters like Dark Forces, Quake, or even Duke Nukem 3D were beating Doom in its own game. Somehow though, the game has aged fairly gracefully in a lot of ways, and certainly more gracefully than a lot of early polygon-based shooters, even if you play it on the N64. So why is that? Well, this wasn't just a port. Actually, it wasn't a port at all, but a completely new game. And it wasn't a spin-off either, but it also was never called Doom 3, even though it probably could have been. The developer, Midway, not id, built 32 all-new levels, remade the enemy and weapon sprites in a darker style, and expanded the game engine to allow for more interesting lighting effects, including colored lighting, more complex level geometry, i.e. rooms on top of rooms, and more complex scripted events. Not to mention excellent high-quality ambient-style music tracks that replaced the series' stable of MIDI metal tracks. It's a little like if Quake and Doom had a baby, and the result is a darker, creepier, more horror-oriented Doom, and one that's gotten plenty of well-deserved post-mortem praise and a bit of a cult following. Doom 64 was eventually reverse-engineered and rebuilt to run in modern source ports on the PC the most recent of which was Doom 64 EX, which actually required a ROM of the cartridge to function. But that's enough ancient history. Let's get to Brutal Doom 64 that was released just in time for Halloween 2016. Sergeant Mark IV followed up this release with a version 1B, then version 1C mere days later, fixing some of the more egregious bugs and adding a few features. So how is it, you may ask? Well, it's pretty awesome, but not quite in the way that I was expecting. If you're at all familiar with Brutal Doom, you know the astounding number of features added to the vanilla game. At this stage, with executions, additional weapons, hand grenades, friendly marines, it's fair to call the game a bit bloated. Brutal Doom 64, on the other hand, exercises a lot more restraint. Besides a few additions here and there, it's essentially the vanilla experience wrapped in a pretty package. There are no additional weapons, no reloads, no aiming down sights. It's all fairly classic Doom, amplifying what was so good about the original Doom 64, but also maybe retaining some of the crummier bits too. Upon booting up the mod, you're treated to the menu with a totally badass remake of the Doom 64 theme. The music is all remakes of the original game and sourced from a number of artists. The first map is this strange open air level that definitely was not in the original game. I guess it's a prelude that's kind of supposed to emulate the opening logo animation from the N64 game, but it's just not that much fun to play. Fortunately, you can just run right past everything and go straight to the exit to get things started the right way. 
Ah, this is how I remember Doom 64. Cramped dark hallways and an eerie atmosphere. The visual polish throughout the entire game is fantastic. Using a lot of lighting flares as well as clever animated smoke sprites, the lighting has been elevated from interesting to downright beautiful in places. The faux volumetric lighting seems to fit the mood of Doom 64 perfectly. It never feels out of place. Who doesn't remember this hallway in the original, but now it looks like this. And can we just stop for a second and just enjoy this water with light reflections? This is where it all started though. The gore, likewise, is just what we've come to expect from a brutal mod. Blood amount is scalable with a switch if you're playing through GZ Doom, and jibs fly and stick to walls and ceilings appropriately. Oddly, most enemies do not have hitboxes as they do in Brutal Doom. Instead, only the zombies and imps have hitboxes right now, and only for their heads, so no blowing off individual legs. Yet. Though I must say I've never had so much fun with a pistol in a Doom game. Here it's powered up slightly, plus headshots are one hit kill, so cleaning out groups of zombies has never been more satisfying. The animation of the screen and the weapons, plus the improved sound design, makes each enemy engagement more visceral than the vanilla version. As expected, it's never been more satisfying to mow down pinkies with the double barrel. There are also weapon cocking and loading animations for the shotguns, which were oddly lacking in the original game. And as of version 1C, the version I'm playing here, there's a secondary for the double barrel shotgun where you can fire a barrel at a time. I really liked this feature in Brutal Doom and it's nice to have here, but there's not yet a way to reload that individually fired barrel. You're stuck discharging the second one in order to have both barrels at the ready, so right now it's a bit of a half-assed feature. The double bladed chainsaw, unique to Doom 64, has been pumped up in power and is now really useful for a lot of different enemies. And perhaps taking a note from Doom 2016, it now uses fuel. But since you happen across one of these on most maps, it adds up to being a pretty useful weapon and not really a last resort anymore. The dark imps that appear translucent in the original game now move faster and seem to almost warp around with this blur effect. At first I actually really liked these guys, I mean not knowing exactly where the enemy is at any given second adds to that horror vibe, but they're almost impossible to deal with at a distance, you pretty much have to get up in their faces to dispatch them. As if a double barreled pain elemental wasn't annoying enough, Thanks, Midway. Revenants have been retconned back into the game after being left out of the original version. The sprite work is a little weird, it's apparently a tweaked sprite from blood, which is fine, but it just doesn't fit the style of the original art. Plus, revenants are garbage. Thanks, Midway. Th 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 thanks, Midway. Also added back in is the Spider Mastermind, and while you could argue the value of adding this guy back in, it at least fits visually. Compared with Brutal Doom, however, their chain guns seem nerfed. The Hellhound has also been added, which apparently was planned, even created, but cut from the original N64 release, probably all due to cartridge space requirements. It's a tough-ish enemy, but again I can't help but feel it's ultimately pointless. There have also been a handful of slight tweaks to the level designs that I think have thrown the game off balance in a few places. Doom 64 has always been tough, and the brutal version takes it up a few notches, so I went in on bring it on difficulty. Throughout the game I seem to swing wildly between being beaten to a pulp and having an excess of health and ammo. The revenants don't help, the arachnotrons, while not tough to take down, deal a ton of damage, and I'm pretty sure these rocket launching things have been amped up here. For my part, I think I'd be happier with the mod if it had just left the enemy profile of the game alone and simply provided the much needed facelift and a few additional game mechanics. And now it's time for a Dome Candy Games Pro Tip. Got a handful of tips for you guys on this one. First, remember to click on any and all computer screens you see throughout the game. In some cases you'll open secret doorways, and in a few cases you'll see security camera-like footage a la Duke Nukem that shows you doorways or secrets in another part of the map. Also, you may happen across some text files that clue you into some lore, or perhaps give you information to get to secret levels. It's pretty cool, and when I first saw this I thought it had been in the original release. The screens are low res and they're modeled to look kind of like Windows 95, however these are actually totally new additions. Pretty cool. Next, these light amp goggles seem to foobar your visuals in GZ Doom, which is a shame. 
So if they do this for you, go to Display Options, OpenGL Options, Preferences, and then turn off Enhanced Night Vision Mode. And finally, I know I mentioned that there weren't any additional weapons included in the mod, but that's not entirely true. If you seek out the super secret level found through map 1, you can earn a laser weapon that isn't the Unmaker. I guess this is the concession for not having a features menu, which is what you earn if you go through this map in the original game. Of course, you could always IDKFA. This has been a Dome Candy Games Pro Tip. Brutal Doom 64 brings this relatively underground classic back into the light in great style. And despite a few nitpicks, it's hard for me not to recommend giving this a playthrough. Especially if you're interested in revisiting the N64 original, as most of the modding done here hasn't tampered with what made the base game good. But again, it hasn't really fixed the base game's issues. Then again, there's always going back to the game on the N64, which I did for a few hours for this review. And I was surprised at how well it held up. After tweaking the controller layout drastically, I was surprised at how well the game moves with the N64 controller. The visuals also still look pretty good and don't suffer from the frame rate problems that plague even some of the best games from the era. The only painful bit is the lack of mid-level saving. But if you'd like to give the brutal version a try, the link to download it from its ModDB page is in the description of the video below. All you need is the original Doom 2 WAD file, but you can also run this in GZ Doom by moving all the PK3 files in the skins folder into your launcher of choice. I use ZDoom Launcher for its ease of use. As always, thanks for watching Dome Candy Games, because video games are like candy for your dome. <laughs>